Hey everyone, this is Blake with Worn and Wound, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Sin Flieger Chronograph 103. Um, now this is the uh, most sort of classically and simply designed of the 103 watches that Sin currently has available with a polished stainless steel case uh, and domed acrylic crystal. Um, this particular model also features a Valjoux 7750 movement uh, and aesthetically uh, really harkens back to classic pilot chronographs of the 1960s and uh, as well as the um, the Bundeswehr watches that uh, Sin was, had a hand in producing in the 1960s as well. Um, so this watch currently retails for $1,880. Um, so let's take a closer look. Okay, so now we're going to take a closer look at the case of the 103. Um, this case is modestly sized. It measures 41 millimeters in diameter, 47 millimeters lug to lug, and is a 20 millimeter lug width. Um, and uh, it also measures 15 millimeters tall, approximately, with a domed acrylic crystal. Um, aesthetically speaking, it's, it's sort of very true to the pilot chronographs of the 1960s, uh, the, with, specifically with the case and the bezel. Um, and so some characteristics that you're going to see in those older watches and with this is this sort of angular lug that points down towards the, um, towards the bracelet, as well as this beveling along the edge of the lugs uh, here. Um, there's also the polished case, which is consistent. And, you know, again, one of the primary characteristics, of course, is this bezel. It's this bi-directional pilot's bezel. It's a black alloy. Um, and again, this, this particular bezel is very true to the style of those that you'd find in sort of more vintage um, pilot chronographs. You see here, the, there's the crown at uh, 3 o'clock with the crown guards. Uh, and now moving to the side, uh, again, you can see that 15 millimeter thick case, which uh, is made a little bit thicker by this domed acrylic crystal. Um, you have the signed crown here uh, with the Sin S. And then, of course, you can see the polished chrono pushers. Uh, and the polishing does continue along the side of the case, but ends on the back here. It is a, a brushed stainless steel uh, screw down case back. And the very sort of like aggressive angular uh, lines of the case, I think, are also very apparent here. It makes for a comfortable wear with the lugs kind of hugging your wrist as you wear it. But again, just sort of, it's very consistent with the uh, pilot chronographs of the 1960s, um, but also just gives it, you know, it really sort of drives home that more masculine, geometric, aesthetic that you're looking for in a watch of this type. And then if we just turn it toward the back here, you can see the uh, screw down polished, or excuse me, the brushed stainless steel case back with some of the information about the watch and the, the brand name, etc. Here we're gonna get a nice close up look at the dial of the 103. So obviously the aesthetic of it is well dictated by the fact that it's powered by a Valjoux 7750. Uh, obviously the workhorse, a uh, Swiss uh, automatic chronograph movement. Um, uh, it's 25 joules, beats a 28. Eight, uh, beats per hour, and I'll actuate it here so you can see how it functions. Um, so obviously you have the uh, the uh, active second hands here at uh, nine o'clock, and then the chronograph function large second hand rotating here, uh, and then at uh, twelve o'clock you have a minute counter, and at six o'clock you have the uh, a twelve hour counter. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the aesthetic of the watch. So. Um, you have this very sort of simple font throughout. Again, this is very consistent with the uh, pilot chronographs of the 1960s. Um, this sort of sans serif uh, numeral markers throughout, and then you have the hash markers on the very outer edge. Uh, large hash marker markers for each hour and small for each minute. And then moving outward from there, you can see on the bezel, there are the minute indicators with numerals every five minutes uh, or seconds, depending on how you're reading it, um, and small hash markers uh, at each other interval. Here at 12 o'clock, you do have uh, sort of the large triangular indicator consistent with polygonal gifts and other pilot watches with uh, a loom dot in the center. Um, you also have the SIN uh, insignia here above the day date. It's sort of hidden behind the minute hand right now. Uh, and you have the day date function here. Um, and then moving towards the inside of the dial, um, the fonts on the subdials are consistent with that elsewhere on the watch. Uh, and you have the word automatic and script here written above the 12 hour uh, uh, chronograph uh, counter. Um, I think that, you know, uh, specifically in sort of the design of the, of the dial, because it is so consistent with the classic uh, pilot chronographs, uh, as are the hands, uh, which are all very sort of elegantly designed. You have, you know, and I, I, someone used this terminology on the forums I was reading, that they have this syringe style hands, which I think is a really apt description, um, where it sort of has this fat middle and then a very pointed uh, needle tip. Um, and then you have this long needle uh, chronograph second hand with sort of the elongated diamond shape at the tip. 
and then you have a straight needle hand here at the nine o'clock subdial, and then each other subdials have uh, sort of this sweeping, uh, sort of pointed tip uh, at the end. Uh, so generally speaking, I think this just provides for a very you know classic, elegant aesthetic to the watch, um, sort of tying it to its roots on those classic pilot chronographs. Um, and I think you know it balancing out with the angular, more aggressive shape of the case, but also the polished case, uh, just provides for a really nice. Um, so for aesthetically consistent, interesting package that um, I think uh, is going to appeal to you certainly if you're a fan of classic pilot chronographs. Um, something else to note here is that there is loom throughout the dial. Uh, there's loom on each of the numer uh, numerical hour markers, as well as loomed filling uh, on the second hand diamond, as well as the filling on the hour and minute hands and on the dot at 12 o'clock on the bezel. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at the 103 on the wrist. Uh, this is a really comfortable watch to wear, as I mentioned, it measures 41 millimeters in diameter and it's got a 47 millimeter lug to lug and it's got these 20, 20 millimeter uh, lug width. Um, it's got a very elegant uh, sort of sporty or more aggressive uh, aesthetic to it and I think that it goes well with, you know, sort of more formal or casual attire. Um, and as I said, it sits really comfortably on your wrist. It's about, it's about 15 millimeters tall with the domed sapphire, but you know, it hugs your wrist really nicely. Uh, and it's, it's easy to sort of fit this bracelet to your, to the size of your wrist. It's got the actual links that you can change, but also there's some multiple settings on the deployment clasp, uh, for sort of getting a more precise fit. Looking at the bracelet here, it's got this really nice, you know, kind of two link design with the brushed stainless steel sort of H shaped links here. And then these filler links. Uh, are polished stainless steel that matches really nicely to uh, the watch case and then the, the links do sort of hug really nicely to the um, to the to the watch case the main watch case looking here you have this deployment class with the polished sort of pull piece and then you've got the brushed main uh, piece of the deployment class here with the sin logo the bracelet here does have um, hexagonal screws on each side so it's it's pretty easy to change the straps um, and um, and uh, the watch does really look great on a number of different strap options, so we're actually going to show you a few of those now. Now I just want to take a look at the 103 on a uh, leather NATO. This is actually a worn and wound NYC NATO uh, in brick. Um, so here you can see sort of the brown and black colorway uh, with the black hardware that matches well with the case. Um, and just sort of giving you an idea that, you know, you could wear this on a brown strap and it would look really great. And also, you know, it's going to look really good on a, you know, military and NATO style strap. Now quickly just want to take a look at the 103 on a, you know, really simple black leather strap. Um, again, it just, it really looks great on this version. Um, you can get the watch on a, a Sin branded uh, black leather strap with white stitching, but uh, really any black leather strap looks great. Now I just want to quickly show you guys the packaging and materials that come with your 103. Um, so obviously it includes a guarantee card, but also the user manual is a nice uh, thick user manual with color photos uh, for the whole 103 series. Um, the watch itself comes in this nice leather uh, hard case uh, with the SIN logo here. Uh, you know, the usual stuff, but this just, you know, has a little bit higher quality feel to it than some other leather cases you might have gotten. Uh, open it up in here, there's the SIN logo on the back of the case, and obviously your uh, 103 is presented as such. Um, uh, this watch in particular does come with a SIN uh, screwdriver tool which is actually really nice. It's got these rubber caps that come on it, so it's sort of safe to throw in a bag or wherever you might want to store it if you don't want to store it in the case. And then of course it comes with the watch here presented really nicely. Um, it, the watch also comes with two uh, hexagonal screwdrivers, uh, one for each hand as you're changing the, the hex screws on the watch bracelet, which is a, another really nice touch, makes it nice and easy to change. So just to conclude uh, on the SIN 103 chronograph, um, on its own, I think aesthetically, it's just a really beautiful watch that combines some really nice, uh, sort of more elegant classic design elements with uh, sort of more angular, aggressive military aesthetic. And I think it just creates a really beautiful package that, you know, if you're into pilot watches or pilot chronographs specifically, it's going to be a piece that really appeals to you. Um, that said, it also has very strong roots in vintage pilot chronographs, you can see examples of watches that have uh, a large resemblance to this piece. And Sin, of course, has a very long history. You know, pilot chronographs were sort of the first pieces that they were creating in uh, as a brand. And they also had a heavy hand in designing the cases for the Bundesfeuer watches, the Hoyer Bundesfeuer watches that many people are familiar with. So this piece, in my opinion, has a lot of history to it uh, for the brand specifically, but also for pilot chronographs in general. 
And you know, with the Valju 7750 movement, the really high quality build that you come to expect with the Sin brand, um, you know, I do think it is a good value. At $1,880, I think, you know, some people might think that, uh, you know, you can get a Valju 7750 for uh, significantly less money than that. But again, when you sort of take into account the history of the watch with the Sin brand uh, and Pilot Chronographs in general, as well as just the, the really outstanding build quality um, and craftsmanship that comes with a Sin watch, I do think that is a great value at that price point. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out the full review on warnandron.com, and you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks.